How's it going everyone? It is Panjano here and in today's video we're going to be showcasing LG Ultra Gear's brand new 27GR 95QE or to most of you their brand new 27 inch OLED 240Hz panel. LG were kind enough to sponsor this video alongside sending out the panel for me to try out and keep. In this video we are going to be focusing more on the panel itself and how I would recommend that you set this up if this is something in which you're looking to get hold of. We're going to be going over two main methods in which I would utilize to make sure that you're getting the most out of this monitor. It's absolutely fantastic out of the box, you don't have to set any of these settings but for most of you looking at a panel like this, you're going to be going for either latency or outright beautiful smooth graphics. In my opinion, that's where it lands perfectly with inside of the market, marketed towards those of you looking to get the absolute lowest latency possible, which this monitor will provide you with its incredibly low sub-pixel times thanks to it being an OLED panel. For initial impressions, the unboxing experience with the monitor was very pleasant, everything is included which you would expect from a monitor of this caliber and price point. Comes with an extremely nice weighted stand in a design form in which I'm quite happy with. I'm personally someone that mounts all of the monitors in which I have and it has standard base amount as well, but it's definitely one of the more classy and sleek looking designs out there. Comes with all of the cables you're going to need to hook it up, including HDMI, DisplayPort and USB-C, and your typical USB upstream cable which is included with most monitors these days. You'll then be met with the remote for the monitor. This is hands down one of my favourite features to come out of any monitor in which I've recently used. Having an external remote that you can quickly grab on your desk to turn the monitor on, off, volume up, brightness, input modes, it's absolutely fantastic. The specs for this monitor are absolutely absurd. Built around a 27 inch QA HD OLED display with a 240Hz refresh rate featuring a 0.03 millisecond response time which trashes even the best of IPS and TM panels. The screen features an anti-glare low reflection coating, supports HDR10 and 98.5% of the DCI-P3 color range. The LG Ultra Gear is also NVIDIA G-Sync compatible and AMD FreeSync Premium certified. With this being an OLED panel comes the fantastic contrast ratio of 1.5 million to 1. Connectivity, we have a 4-pole headphone jack located at the bottom of the monitor for ease of use, two HDMI 2.1 ports and one DisplayPort 1.4, alongside the traditional USB upstream port which most monitors support these days. Once everything is hooked up for your system and you jump into some of your games for the first time, upon initial impressions you may notice that the monitor is more on the darker or dimmer side of many monitors you may have used in the past. Well, if this is the case, first of all we want to jump into the settings to make sure that we dial them in properly, as out of the box this monitor does come quite tame. Press in the settings menu where you'll then see the beautiful on-screen display including Included with this monitor. It's incredibly responsive. We'll first of all navigate down to the general settings inside of here, scroll down towards the bottom to the energy saving modes. I would first of all recommend that deep sleep remains on. Automatic standby I would recommend setting to 4 hours. With that out of the way we can dial in the rest of the monitor settings and I would recommend going over to the desktop to do this. Inside of the desktop go to the customization panel and set your desktop background to a plain black background. The reason we're going to do this is we want to make sure that we have a complete black plane to ensure that when we do our color settings and brightness adjustments we we aren't re-enabling those pixels or artificially boosting them to the point where the OLED isn't actually turning off the black pixels. I've seen many people do this, the up the black boost levels and the gamma levels to the point where this OLED panel is no longer turning off the pixels and displaying true blacks, it's keeping the pixels enabled and actually showing up darker greys. Upon initial impressions of the monitor, it's been absolutely fantastic. Whether it's been CSGO, Valorant, Apex Legends or any other fast paced shooters in which I personally play a lot of, no monitor has ever come close in terms of low latency and how fast everything feels. For the longest time, for my secondary display, I was actually utilizing a very popular 360Hz IPS 1080p panel and that felt lightning fast. And there was nothing particularly sleek about the design and it being 1080p meant there were quite a few limitations. Moving over to this 27 inch display at 1440p with OLED, everything is surprisingly crisp and incredibly fast even compared to the 360Hz panel. For those of you like myself who might be thinking about jumping to this monitor from a already high refresh rate monitor, one of the main factors that stood out to me with a high refresh rate OLED was how minimal or non-existent ghosting was. I noticed that if I rapidly move my mouse around in a circular motion in a high FPS first person shooter on my old 1080p 360Hz monitor, you would see this sort of smushiness, this smoothness, it almost looked like you're watching a fast paced YouTube video. Whereas on the 240Hz OLED, everything is razor sharp and there is little to no motion blur whatsoever, which means you're seeing every single frame rendered right in front of you instantly with minimal smearing or blending. If you're someone that's looking at this sort of product, you're more than likely going to be looking at it for its ultra low latency benefits which are practically unmatched. This is going to give you that experience and you're probably going to be taking your gaming slightly more seriously than a typical casual user. Well in that scenario you're more than likely playing in a lighting controlled room or you at least have some curtains or blinds that you usually draw or you play later on in the evening anyway. Well in those scenarios the monitor's brightness suffices completely and this is when we're talking about SDR content. For moving over to HDR content the peak brightness is raised astronomically from what it is compared to SDR content. So if you're looking to make the move over to HDR in 2023 and you're still looking to get those ultra low response times and keep 
keep a competitive advantage, the brightness experience on this monitor is completely different when utilizing HDR. Another point worth noting when moving over to OLED technology, or if this is something that you do get to experience soon when utilizing this on a PC, is the slight fringing you may see when reading text on web pages or potentially on in game HUD elements. Due to the pixel layout of an OLED display, this is going to look different than what it typically would on an IPS, TN, or a panel which is using older technology. This is due to the sub pixel layout being slightly different. I believe there is an unofficial patch in which you can install, and it might be coming to Windows soon where you can use a different sub pixel layout for text, which will help drastically in this department, but it is something worth noting at this experience. This doesn't translate to textures or sharp edges inside of games. Everything with inside of all games in which I've played on this monitor, whether I'm playing at ultra high in graphics or what I usually play at, which is very low on an optimized system, everything looks sharp, crisp, and fluid. So far, my gaming experience has been absolutely fantastic, especially when putting tons of hours on games such as Valorant. One thing I have noticed whilst playing on this monitor, even compared to my old 360 hertz monitor, is that my tracking feels better on this display. This could be placebo by all means, but due to the lower motion blur of this display and high refresh rate, everything just feels snappy, responsive, and very easy to keep focus of. Again, I'm not getting any of that sped up YouTube video feeling on this monitor. I feel as if I'm getting more of the raw visual performance of a high refresh rate monitor. I've had some of my best rounds of Apex Legends on this monitor in recent history, where aiming and tracking has felt absolutely sublime. I mean, even compared to some of the other monitors in which I've been testing recently, or monitors in which I've used in the past, unlike monitors which were coming out a couple of years ago with these super high refresh rates, having a high refresh rate OLED really ticks all boxes for most people. Whether you're someone like me, when playing FPS games, you want every single frame possible for the lowest input latency possible, and the fastest, most responsive gameplay experience, outside of utilizing an ancient CRT, this is the best experience you're going to get by a mile. On the flip side of that, for those of you that want the silkiest, smoothest gameplay experience possible, you like ramping up the graphics and you want to utilize G-Sync or FreeSync with this monitor, well you can do that and you're going to have an absolutely beautiful experience, especially when accompanied with those near infinite contrast levels which OLED can deliver you. Experiencing games in which you've played in the past, with ultra high graphics on this monitor going back to it, almost feels as if there has been a small update to the game visually. I found myself booting up games like Cyberpunk and other dark environment games just to load into them just to see what they look like for a while, even if I have no intention of playing them. It is a truly mind-blowing experience, and the only time I have experienced OLED in the past is on a mobile device. Seeing this on the monitor, right in front of your face on the desktop, especially when the lighting has been turned down inside of my office, it is one of the more beautiful gaming experiences I have ever had. And the best part about all of this, in my opinion, is its 1440p resolution. Without this being 4K, it's not putting that much of a massive demand on modern GPUs to drive your games towards 240 FPS. Even if you're struggling to get near that FPS, with the ultra-low pixel response times of an OLED, paired with something like Nvidia's G-Sync or Radeon's FreeSync technology, you're still going to get a very snappy, responsive, and smooth gameplay experience when utilizing these technologies together. So when it comes to utilizing the monitors and the settings in which I would recommend to ensure that you're getting the best experience possible, method number one is going to be for the absolute lowest latency possible. This is for those of you that crank the dial all the way down on your in-game settings, it's raising your 1% lows and having the silkiest, smoothest, snappiest feeling game possible. Method two is for those of you that want the most beautiful gameplay experience possible and smoothness is important. If you're someone that likes to play on medium to ultra high in graphics, you play slower single player titles and it's all about getting the most beautiful, smoothest experience possible, method two is for you. Jumping into method one, first thing we're going to do is take ourselves over to our game adjust and turn adaptive sync off as we won't be using any VRR for either AMD FreeSync or Nvidia G-Sync as this will introduce a small amount of input latency. Next up, either on your Nvidia control panel or AMD Radeon control panel, what we'll then do is we'll take the settings on the left hand side for those of you on Nvidia GPUs and the settings on the right hand side for those of you on AMD Radeon GPUs and make sure that those are all applied and set to how they are displayed on screen for your respective GPU. Make sure that your monitor is set to its native resolution, in this case it's going to be 2560 by 1440. Go over to your setup display settings where you can find the display scaling modes and set this to either no scaling or utilize integer scaling if you would like to set your games to 720p later on if you're looking for stupidly high FPS. Another quick note, if you're serious about getting the lowest latency possible and making sure that you have 100% compatibility with high refresh rates in games like Apex Legends, disconnect any other displays you have connected to your PC when gaming. First up for in-game settings, for the most part you can set these up to your personal preference if you're looking to minimize latency, set your shadows to as low as possible, never use higher than the medium setting for your texture settings, this will help you avoid running into a potential VRAM bottleneck, make sure that VSync has always been switched to off inside of the game, utilize full screen or full screen exclusive mode for your display options in every game possible, and if you have the option for Nvidia Reflex, nearly always set this to Nvidia Reflex on plus boost. If you were looking to make use of integer scaling, you could also set your in-game resolution to 1280 by 720 with integer scaling turned on on your Nvidia or Radeon control panel, and seeming that 720p is directly half the resolution of 1440p, this can then be properly integer scaled and displayed in your monitor, allowing for stupidly high 
FPS in GPU bound scenarios in fast paced first person shooters. This is a very, very niche setting, but for those of you out there that are like, I need the best FPS possible, the highest 1% lows, that's all that matters to me. And that is a very big factor into why you might have bought this monitor, especially at OLED, I would definitely recommend giving 720p a try. For method two, we're going to first of all start off by navigating into the settings, got a game adjust, this time turning adaptive sync to on as we are going to make use of this setup properly in every single game that we play. With adaptive sync turned on, go inside of the Nvidia or Radeon control panels, make sure that free sync or G sync settings have all been turned on and enabled. For Nvidia users, navigate up to manage 3D settings. This time you're going to be setting the low latency mode to ultra. Make sure that G sync has been set up for your monitor display technology with inside of this panel. Proceed to scroll down towards the bottom until we find vertical sync, where we'll then be turning this to on in the control panel. Navigate up towards the top where we can then find the max frame rate option. We'll then turn this to on, go to the maximum value and set this to 237. The reason we're going to be capping at 237 and not 240 is due to the way that variable refresh rate or G-Sync slash FreeSync works. It works in a refresh rate window, typically from 48 FPS or Hertz to 240. But if your game renders over 240 FPS, it's going to stop G-Sync or FreeSync from working as you're no longer running in the operating range. So implementing an FPS cap 3 FPS lower than the maximum G-Sync range makes sure that no matter what, we are always playing with inside of the G-Sync range, getting that beautiful, smooth, silky experience. We're not finished there. Every single game in which you play from now on, you need to make sure that the V-Sync option in game has been turned off, but remains enabled in the control panel. If you're looking to make use of HDR on this monitor, especially in the long term, I would highly recommend only utilizing Windows 11 when doing this. If you have Windows 11, you can make use of the Microsoft HDR calibration tool in the Windows Store. Boot this up, follow all of the on-screen prompts with HDR enabled on the monitor, and it will allow you to dial in your HDR settings for the monitor properly, leaving you with a very, very good looking display. And there you guys have it. That is my video for the LG Ultra Gear 240 Hertz OLED display. I was incredibly intrigued as to how this display would actually look and play ever since it showed up on my radar late December. It's been something I've been eager to get my hands on and I'm very pleased that I've been able to have the experience of utilizing this. And if you would like to learn any more details about the LG Ultra Gear or look to purchase one, please make sure that you do utilize the links provided in the description down below. And again, a massive thank you to LG Ultra Gear for reaching out, providing me with this monitor and this experience. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video. And in the meantime, if you're looking to get more FPS games in your system without having to spend a penny, make sure that you do check out the videos on screen now and I'll see you guys in the next one.